What is up insaners and welcome to our first watchlist video for the new FPL season guys. For those of you who are not aware of this series, we do regular watchlist videos of players that we are interested in for the upcoming game weeks. More often than not, these are the players we don't have in our team currently. Now this one is just based on eye test and stats from one week so the sample size will be small but nevertheless, it should give you some good pointers to think for your FPL team. Guys, we are aiming to reach 1000 subscribers and you can surely help us get there faster. Hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. You can also like today's video if you like what you see. It'll really mean a lot to us guys. Great, let's dive straight into it then. Our first name is a bit surprising. Now we have Kieran Tierney on our watch list. Yes, Tierney plays for Arsenal who lost against Brentford in the first game. But I still think there's potential here. Tierney was playing very advanced and was very unlucky not to get anything for his efforts. Guys, he played 6 key passes with a lot of low driven crosses into the box. To be honest, all it needed was a proper striker to finish and Arsenal in general I think really missed Aubameyang and Lacazette in the game. After watching the match, I thought Chambers was much more defensive minded, allowing Tierney to have the license to bomb forward and attack. Tierney also got 3 shots, 1 on target, 1 blocked and 1 off target. Guys, you can understand that there is decent potential here. Now another very positive thing I saw was his link up with Emil Smith Rowe who was looking like Arsenal's main man in attack. Now my only worry here is Arsenal's defensive performance which is pretty poor. As Mari looked really weak in the centre with Ben White. Now for the low clean sheet potential, I don't think so Tierney in particular is worth getting in for game week 2 and 3 but he could be a threat from game week 4 when fixtures turn for Arsenal till game week 12 when they face Liverpool. We need to monitor his fitness levels and overall performance over the next two game weeks as he tends to get injured a lot and we would definitely want to avoid that. Overall, he's surely a defender to keep an eye on and maybe even worth getting into our teams at 5 million if Arsenal can ramp up their clean sheet potential. Because the next player is also a defender and we have Ricardo Pereira from Leicester City. Now we know that he's got FPL pedigree and he could be another great option in a slightly expensive 5.5 million price bracket. Last year was tough for him, we all know that. He got injured, then came back but obviously wasn't operating at the same level. His assist for Vardy against Wolves in game week 1 guys was absolutely brilliant and reminded us of the Pereira we are all familiar with. It was great skill to get past two players before sending a perfect cross for Vardy. He also got a clean sheet so his points tally was quite decent. Guys, if he can hit these kind of balls into the box more often, I think he has a lot of creative potential in general. Leicester was in fact quite lucky to get a clean sheet with a couple of poor passes from Amati but like Arsenal guys, if Leicester can build and improve on their clean sheet potential, I think Pereira can score a lot of FPL points. The upcoming fixtures are quite decent, Man City in game week 4 could be a tricky one but if you are somehow looking for an attacking defender in the 5.5 million price range which isn't Shaw or Dinier, I think he's a good bet. Great, now let's jump on to some midfielders. The first name we have here is Saar from Watford guys. I think he was definitely one player who went a bit under the radar for game week 1. But I think the signs were there against a Villa team who massively outperformed their expected goals conceded last season. That was in fact one of the reasons we didn't go for any Villa defenders for our own FPL team. Now coming back to Saar, he caused all sorts of problems for target, so much so that Villa defender had to be substituted early on in the game. As his pace and strength allowed him to get behind the Villa defence, yes maybe he got a bit lucky in terms of his goal which went in via deflection but he put in a lot of crosses in the box for the strikers to finish. I really think he was unlucky not to get an assist for his cross to Dennis with the first shot blocked before Dennis finished with the second attempt. Otherwise guys, this was a sure shot double digit haul for him. Now coming to his importance in the Watford team, I think he's pretty much nailed and could be potentially on penalties as well. I think that should happen if Dini's not on the pitch. If you're considering taking out a Gundogan from your team, he could be a serious replacement guys who could cause a lot of problems for the Brighton defence which looked a bit shaky in their opening game against Burnley. Definitely one to watch out for sure. Talking about another cheap and a budget sort of replacement for Gundogan, we have Buemo from Brentford. Guys, he had an excellent game against Arsenal and was in fact very lively playing out of position. Now that is something we FPL managers love in the game, right? He was playing as a secondary striker for Brentford in terms of the formation but with Tony coming in deep, he was released a lot of times and really grabbed attention. Guys, if this continues, he could be a steal up top. Imagine a 5.5 million midfielder scoring goals and providing assists for this really attacking Brentford side. Now, one really interesting thing is that he could be on set pieces too. Plus, if you look at his championship stats, 
He has scored 25 goals and provided 17 assists in the past two seasons. He also scored in the friendly against Man United, plus this performance against Arsenal would surely give him a lot of confidence going into game week two. Looking at Brentford's fixtures, guys, they play Crystal Palace, Aston Villa, and Brighton, who all struggled in their opening fixtures and don't have the strongest defenses right now. I think it might just be the right time to get in someone like a Buemo before taking him out in game week six when Brentford plays Liverpool and the fixtures get really tricky after that. I think if you're saving up to go for a Lukaku up top or even a switch to Son in midfield, the likes of Saar and Buemo could be great enablers for your team, guys. Talking about Son, and he's our next name on the watch list. There was a huge debate before the start of the season whether to go for Son, considering that people were preferring the premium options like Bruno and Salah in their teams. I think a few questions were answered in game week one, but there is still a lot in the air. Tottenham showed that they could play without Harry Kane, and the try of Mora, Bergwijn, and Son up top did really well against a rusty Man City side. Guys, I think Man City was always supposed to suit Tottenham, with City having majority of the possession and Tottenham playing on the counter with a lot of pace. In terms of this style of play, I think Nuno got it absolutely spot on. Now, Son in terms of FPL has been really consistent over the years and by the early signs, guys, he could have another great season at Spurs. A slight worry with him is that Tottenham is facing Wolves, Watford and Crystal Palace in the next three games who might not have that much possession and won't definitely attack as much as City for sure. The issue here is that Spurs could miss that creative spark. Kane again might not start or might be transferred to Man City by then. Other options include Dele Alli guys, who played a lot deeper against City, but the setup might change against these weaker teams. What do you guys think? Do you think it's enough from a creative viewpoint? We understood that Spurs can play on the counter, but it'll be interesting to see how they cope up with the smaller teams. Nevertheless, fair play to all those of you who started with Son. Now, he was quite close in terms of entering our team as well, but we went without him in the end. Coming to the fixtures, guys, in the next three games for Spurs look really good from an attacking point of view, but after that, they have Chelsea and Arsenal. Now, I won't say that they are the toughest games on the calendar by any means, but still, they could be tricky. To be honest, guys, Son won't be a bad move by any means, but do keep in mind that getting the likes of Lukaku might get a bit tricky if you already have Bruno Fernandes and Mo Salah in your team, plus the Son transfer. You might need to do significant reductions in your defence or even attack, and that might just screw the overall balance of your team. Guys, make sure you get your strategy right before the Son move, but I'm all for it. I love the player and let's move on. Next, we have a couple of forwards. Now, we'll start with DCL first. He's a slightly more expensive option than Richarlison at 7.5 million. Now, guys, we all know about Dominic Calvert-Lewin and how he is a great threat in the air. Now, we all had him in our draft and I think with the injury doubt that he had and the Ings transfer to Villa, we all shipped him out. Well, guess what? He's a viable option for sure. He got a couple of chances and did poach a goal himself, showing that he's still playing at a high level despite the slight injury that he had in preseason. Though Richarlison got a goal and an assist, Benitez will base a lot of Everton's attacks around Dominic Calvert-Lewin, and that could mean a huge chunk of points for the Everton number nine. His ownership is also quite low at the moment, so there's a lot to be gained if you get him early, especially when the fixtures look really good from an attacking point of view. Coming to Richarlison, guys, he's already seen a price rise to 7.6 million after a double-digit haul against Southampton. Guys, he created two big chances and scored one on his way to an 11-pointer game. Incidentally, this is also the 11th time in his career that he collected the maximum bonus points. Now, he's already been transferred in by more than 200,000 managers before the Game Week 2 deadline, and the worry with him is his minutes in Game Week 4 and 5. Now, because of his Brazil call-up, he might miss at least the Game Week 4 match after the international break because of a congested World Cup qualifier schedule against Chile, Argentina and Peru. Guys, I think if that is set to happen, then it might be better to look at players like Antonio. But yeah, if your plan is set to get him in straight away, make sure you have a backup plan when he misses a game or two. Overall, I feel DCL is a better long-term pick among the two and he surely is worth the extra 0.5 million in my opinion. In terms of some other players that did really well, you have the likes of Greenwood, Jota and Ben Rama, who we already covered in the preseason and a lot of you already have him in your FPL teams. Wilson and Antonio too had great games and are worth considering, especially Wilson with St. Maximin in support and Willock joining Newcastle in midfield. Obviously guys, this is a continuously evolving list and it'll keep changing throughout the season. Let me know if you have Gundogan in your team and what players you are looking at to replace him if he's injured. If not, then do tell me your watch list or any set of players that I have missed and should be in our watch list for the upcoming games. So that'll be all for my side guys. I really hope you'll find this video helpful in planning your future transfers. Hope you guys had a great game week one. 
Make sure you hit the like button if you liked our first watch list of the season. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well, guys. There's a lot of good stuff coming up this year, and I'm sure you wouldn't want to miss all of that. We'll be back on Friday with our team selection video for Game Week 2, and then we'll be doing a deadline stream on Saturday, about an hour before the deadline. Make sure you catch up with all that good stuff, enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see you in Saners next time. Thank you.